Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of the Donkcast. Today, sadly, Jacob will not be joining us, but we do have Ian and Al. Say hi guys. Hi guys. Yes, hello guys. Um, just before we start, I'd like to make a formal apology for not making it last week. <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a window salesman in my house for over three hours. Um, needless to say, I bought windows <laughs> just to get rid of them. Uh, no, but genu genuinely, I know that all the Ian fans out there were devastated, and that's why the video currently has so few views. It was that um, one guy so, in the back was absolutely devastated, so, man. So I am sorry for last week, and I shall return in earnest to, to satisfy your Pokemon needs. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Such a formal start. <laughs> oh, where to go from here? <laughs> so how, how's your guys' week been? <laughs> uh, fun. Uh, we all got promo jump bluffs, so we that did. was fun. We did. I'm sitting on 12 online. I mean, I was actually, <laughs> I was considering doing some sort of like giveaway or something like that at some point. Uh, I don't know when I'll do this. Please don't hold me to that. But if you want jump bluffs, comment below and just say, "Can I have some jump bluffs, John?" And I'll send you some. That's I the also giveaway. Have twelve. <laughs> I would assume Jacob has twelve, and Al, you've probably got twelve as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so there are plenty of jump. We have jump bluffs. <laughs> <laughs> Sven says I'm not allowed to sell them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely really excited to play some Lost March. Actually, I built it before um, we came on tonight just to have a bit of a game with it. But I forgot that I have zero time ever, so probably won't get a chance to play them anytime soon. But there's always a Thursday night. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What about you, Al? What have you been up to this week? Uh, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very exciting. That's how wild well, Al is. Been. There's so much exciting stuff going on, he can't even just remember. All it. that, like, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man. Just Al's that's, been just out it. of the game for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> DDV, DDV. Well, last week was not a total bust. Jacob and I did get together and we had a little bit of a discussion about just some stuff that had been coming out. We talked regionals and uh, Roanoke. We talked just a bunch of the new cards that were coming out. And we got dead excited because it was the first time that we've seen new tag team GXs for like, blah, like since Snorlax was released, which was quite a few weeks ago now. And um, the minute we we stopped recording I, or it was the next morning i look on uh, poke beach and boom there's another one a couple of hours later there was another one and then like the next day there was another one so we've got like three new tag team gx's to talk about today which is nuts um and one of them is the one we're going to lead with and that is gengar mimikyu and arguably i think this is the best one so far that's a strong stance i think this is the best one so far Something that Stoggy. something that dies to right is beaten with not without even having a choice. Don't worry band. about right. Gives beaten. your opponent three prizes. Don't worry about right beaten. You're gonna use. Don't worry about right beaten. Only people who come in first play Zoroark. <laughs> you, you don't have to worry about it. We have a plan for that. It's fine. The the way I see this card being played is like a one off tech in a Malamar deck. You basically just play out the game as is and then boom here comes Mimikyu, here comes Gengar Mimikyu and just wrecks face man so before we get into it the the moves on this card it has one move and one GX move the GX move you'd probably play the first turn you drop it down psychic energy plus so your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during their next turn if you have at least one extra psychic card a psychic energy card attached to it in addition to its attack cost each player draws until they have seven cards in their hand you're like okay you've just given your opponent seven cards but that's fine they can't play any of them and then poltergeist 50 times your opponent reveals their hand this attack does 50 damage to, for each trainer card you find there not item not stadium not supporter trainer card all inclusive trainer card this is going to do big damage for two energies at the pivotal moment in the game that you need it 
I think it's a great little tech card and I think it will see more play than a lot of them that we see because a lot of them that we've seen so far, you've got to build the whole deck around it. This just slots really, really nicely into Malamar deck. But see, that's the thing, like, we're getting this brand new super-powered mechanic um, with all these really interesting new attacks and things like that. Is the best one going to be just a tech? Like, you know, I mean, sure, surely we're expecting a tag team GX deck that's going to, or decks that are going to be really, really very, strong. Very, very possibly, but like, this... It's, it seems a bit lacklustre if the best one's well, just a tech. The thing he's got going for him is that he can hit 250. And he can hit 250 for two energy. Yeah, well, this is the other issue with the attack. Like, it, it's a great attack, don't get me wrong, but... It's one of these ones that's controlled by your opponent. So if your opponent's expecting this, if this becomes a, a one of in Malamar decks, the way that you play changes because of that and it loses its impact, I suppose. Play the guard. Oh, you don't need to change the way you I play suppose. it, you know, you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, um, obviously, like, I'd play it in a Malamar deck. I wouldn't like to bench it against, like, one prize decks. And obviously, against, like, something like Zoroark, you don't want to bench it. But. In the case of being able to fire this down and then simply Horror House GX, get yourself up to like seven cards and then your opponent can't do anything. They can only like, they can attack probably, but like you've got 240 HP. If your name's not Zoroark, you're probably not knocking this thing out. And then Poltergeist is going to do such good damage. Like, there's a very, very good chance this thing takes a knockout. If your opponent has four combined items, stadiums, trainers, and any sort, they they take 200 damage. You know what I mean? That's a lot. That's a yeah, lot, it's... a lot of damage to just fling out from, like, just this Pokemon that just came onto the field that turn. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's nice. I, I'm definitely not saying it's a bad card, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed if you pull one of these. Um, but I, I don't know if it's, I, I, as you say, it doesn't carry a deck on its own. And that to me is maybe the issue with this. If we're looking at this brand new mechanic and it can't carry a deck. The thing is, that, that... carrying a deck's all well and good, right? But these are three prizers. I don't think a, a deck really exists if you take two knockouts and lose the game. Do you know what I mean? Like it has to mm -hmm. be something that can sustain itself it, like to be able to be a whole deck in and of itself that's asking a lot of a three prize attacker it's too I scary mean, man I, i'm with you that is very true but like for example pikachu zekrom uh, that could be that is going to be a deck you would assume what about pikachu uh, zekrom and pals yes bringing tapu koko and uh zero aura probably it yeah you're probably right so you go from Pika Z to uh, two prizes, try and make it seven prizes. I mean, it, it's definitely possible. Like it's, it's good, but like to get the big payoff of that, you're you're asking to put something like six energy onto that thing, and that just scares me. Are you scared of Tapu Koko GX? <laughs> I'm just scared of putting six energy on anything. <laughs> I had my run-ins with plenty of Guardi. I played Guardi for a while, man. Putting six energy on a Guardi is even that scary. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're over-committing every single time. But putting two energy on something like a Gengar Mimikyu feels really good to me because it will be able to do stupid good damage for that. And I, I feel as if it's the best value attacker we're getting here. When you look at some of the other ones, it's just... It's too much. I mean, Christ, Magic Carp Wailord needs about 15 energy before it starts doing something. Do you know what I mean? It's... It's crazy. That's why you don't play with Magic Card Waylord to actually do. No. <laughs> um, I think we've lost Ian. Is he gone? We can't hear you, Ian. Well, do you hear anything? Hey. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right. I I have returned. <laughs> Fear not, fan. I am back. <laughs> Continue to listen. <laughs> yeah, our ratings um, just uh, dropped precipitously. <laughs> yeah, when I was away, Al. Uh, <laughs> um, on a wee side note about Magic Up Wheel Lord, by the way, 
The Secret of Their Art is amazing. It's fantastic. It's absolutely yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Like, I, I don't care about rainbows and max uh, realities and those kind of things, but if I was playing that deck, I would want four of those. I read something, actually, that the Secret <laughs> Rares look to be... Um, they look to be, like, capturing the moment where the two Pokemon first met or something like that. Um, so like when you look at the Venusaur Celebi one, they're like they're just meeting each other, and then the 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 main art of it is when they've been together for a while or something like. I feel as if that I read that somewhere, but I mean that could be wrong. But that is so cool. Right, and Gengar's That's true. The Mimikyu though. The Gengar Mimikyu one. Mimikyu looks a bit uh, disconcerting. <laughs> it looks <laughs> as if it's like. It it looks as if they haven't been partners for very long in that picture though. Like it looks as if like, and then the Snorlax Eevee one. It looks as if Eevee's just bounced into Snorlax's dinner and started eating some of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the Magic Art Waylord is as if Magic Art's accidentally been spouted up by Waylord. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's pretty cool. Like if that is, we'll see with when more of them come out. But that's really really cool. The only one that for me looks like a secret rare is the Venusaur Celebrate one. I think the other ones don't even look like secret rares. It's amazing. <laughs> no, I, I'm yeah, totally. They, they look like I don't even know what they look like. A full art, maybe fan art. Uh, <laughs> fan art. Yeah, that's yeah. probably more accurate. No, <laughs> I'm absolutely digging really the cool art on these. The the yeah. art on all of the um, the tag teams look absolutely insane. I really really like them. They. They've done such a good job with them. It's it's nice to see. I remember back when we were like when I was a kid, and a lot of the the cards would come out with like really really cool art on it, and I would want a card just because it had cool art, and it, that yeah. really kind of takes me back to that. Like it, it, some of these look really really cool. The Gengar Mimikyu, um, card itself looks absolutely boss, man. I really really like it, uh, and I. I know I just said that I probably wouldn't want... I, I I feel scared putting these things down onto the field, but I'd be quite happy to stick them in my binder. I think they look absolutely insane. I really, really oh, like them. Yeah. Definitely. And I have. I did notice the other like, day, and I, I thought I was really onto something here, but I mentioned it to you guys just off-screen there, and you were like, yeah, obviously. Like, the, they seem to be doing, like, one of each type. Does that mean we only get one of each type? <laughs> and this Tag Team GX thing goes away pretty quickly, like... Is this going to be the next like ancient trait? Well, that's not really interesting. Thought. Until like the end of this year, or well, the end of twenty nineteen, when you get like the sets for the new game that's going to come out. Then. Yeah. So we'll probably have at least a couple of sets. Mm. It's, it's just I'm kind of hoping they'll do tag teams, except with different types, like they did the uh, shiny Pokemon in Steam Seed. Yeah. So, so you're thinking cool. dual types there now, yeah? Yeah, I think that would be neat. That might I be think a bit that too would, powerful. I, I think that would be awesome, but you're right, they would have to be really careful how they balance that. I mean, like, think about how good Volcani and EX was, yeah. hitting itself for weakness, you know, in the mirror and stuff. Like, that kind of thing's crazy. I, I feel as if Volcani was just so good as a card, I don't think it would have mattered what type it was. Just yeah, very true. Giving itself an inbuilt, essentially, like, electro power. Like mm. that is a lot, and it was it was really really good. <laughs> ah, I miss Volcanian. I miss Volcanian as well. That was a great <laughs> deck. <laughs> Winners played Volcanian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was Gengar Mimik Mimikyu. Certainly a polarizing GX for for us, and um, I'm sure this one will not be polarizing. We'll go straight to Latios and Latias GX. The dragon type of our tag teams, and it's interesting. To say that. So it's got again one normal attack, one GX attack. The normal attack is Buster Purge for 240 damage. Discard three energy from this Pokemon. The cost is Water Psychic, Psychic, Colorless. Pretty costly. And then Aero Unit Psychic Plus. Uh, attach five basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. If this Pokemon has one extra energy in addition to its attack cost, prevent all of effects all effects all effects of attacks wow uh, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. Okay. You ready? You ready for this? Yep. Malamar. It's good, isn't it? 
<laughs> it's really good. I... <laughs> it's the exact same thing we said for Gengar and Mimikyu. Play it with Malamar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a one-off take in Malamar and like throwing oh, a couple of water in. Right? So it's fine. True. Very true. This thing hits like a truck and I like that it has the the GX attack on it is very, very good. And being able to attach five basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like is very, very, very good. Um, probably not so good in the Malamar, actually. Um, so maybe we do see it in some sort of different style. But, I mean, we can't argue. Being able to do 240 damage, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And it's 250 cool. HP as well, which a lot of Pokemon struggle to hit. And it's weak to Fairy, which... I mean, yeah, we see Gardevoir about, but, like, that's really the only fairy deck. Do you know what I mean? So you get beat by <laughs> Gardevoir. That's a shame. I guess with the, yeah, the only fairy deck, deck. Like, the only fairy deck is, uh, is Gardy. That's the only one. No, well, there is one. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's my bad. That's my bad, really. There is one more. And he is a good boy. <laughs> anyway. A little nine tails, I suppose. That's... That's good into a lot of yeah, decks. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, yeah. But he only hits like 200 at most. Yeah, it can't one-shot it though. Yeah. I mean... It, it's just... It is good. There, there's no... It, for for what it is, it's fantastic. I, I, will it see a whole lot of play? Maybe. I don't see it being... I don't see it being everywhere. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's numbers to kill a lot of tag team. I guess it depends how popular the other one. Yeah, that's a good, that's a very good point actually. That is a very good point, yeah. Because if it's hitting 240 damage, it KOs a lot of the, the tag teams. And even then, like, 240 plus a choice band gets rid of nearly all of them, bar like the Waylord one. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it, that's, that's a very good point. That, it I does mean, hit very good numbers. That plus a choice band one shots everything, ex like every card in the format apart from Whale Lord Magic Up. That's right, isn't it? There isn't one with more than 270 HP apart from that one. Yeah, apart from something bodybuilding dumbbells. Yeah. Well yeah, really stuff cool, it, something. something like that. But I'm trying to think if there's that even as a thing. I don't I think, think there is. That would actually work. I don't think there's anything with two stage two. So you'd have to use a uh, muscle pads. Muscle pads, something. yeah. Oh that yeah, so, I forgot about that. Like, so from that angle, it is, it is really good. And obviously you've got something like Rainbow Brush, if you wanted to put that in yep. to get your water. Obviously you can play uh, Rainbow Energy, um, which is probably easier, but at least you've got a few options with it. I, I quite like it. Or you could play, you could play Malamar uh, <coughs> with um, Quagsire and Naganado. Just all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Although you wouldn't actually need Malamar at that point, would you? Yeah, we're getting too far into that one. But yeah, very good card though. <laughs> very good card. And it's it's again very very pretty. I I like that they've used that as a dragon type. We don't have a Latios or Latias yet. It's not as if we see that card. That is a GX or everywhere we do see Latios that has got the the 30 30 attack which is good but like we don't see that one all the time unlike the next one we're going to talk about which is guard of our sylveon <laughs> <laughs> and guard of our sylveon has like let's say interesting art i don't know if i really like it it's very blue um <laughs> which i don't really want for my fairies but whatever um so this one actually has three attacks um 260 hp First attack for a colourless energy, fairy song, search your deck for two fairy energies, attach them to your bench Pokemon any way you like, then shuffle your deck. The second attack is called Kaleidostorm, um, that might be wrong, but yeah, Kaleidostorm. 150 damage, choose any number of energy cards, attach your Pokemon in play and rearrange them in any way you like uh, for fairy fairy colourless. And then the GX attack, fairy 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 plus... Uh, mm, Miracle Magical GX, I'm guessing that will probably get changed. 200 damage. If you have three extra fairy energy attached to this Pokemon, in addition to the tax energy cost, so six energy, your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck. Full stop. That's it. Their, your opponent shuffles their hand 
and do their deck. They don't get I mean, to draw any cards. <laughs> you, you pull that off, you probably win the game. 200, er- 200 <laughs> damage, and your opponent doesn't have a hand. I'm, I'm going to take two prizes by KOing your Alola Ninetales, your Lele, whatever, and you don't get a hand. Sure. <laughs> It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, I guess we talked about how like they don't constitute their own decks and stuff like this, but <laughs> surely this is a one of in a guard of war deck every single day of the week. Uh, has to be. The, I mean, the only the only issue around it, I suppose, is that it has to be the fairy energy. You couldn't get away with something like DCE, for example. True. So that makes it that little bit more awkward. But I mean, you could maybe even play it with something like Mina. And try and power it up with Mina, you know, something yeah. like that. Well, um, maybe your counts just change a little bit. Like you've got the Kaleido Storm as well. Bear that in mind. Do 150 damage, then just move all the energy onto them if you wanted. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, it's got 260 HP. There's a lot of decks that won't be able to deal with that. Definitely. So I mean, you're not expecting that to get one shot all that easily. Even mm-hmm. something doing 230 with a choice band seems ludicrous. Do you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of decks that can hit that. So then, you you tell your opponent, next turn, I'm doing 200 damage, and then you get no cards in your hand. I mean, that's that's pretty intimidating, is it not? Yeah. It, it, I quite like this one. It's good. It, it is good. Uh, is it too gimmicky? Possibly. Is it too hard to pull that off? Probably. <laughs> Will it be amazing that one thing you do? Yes. <laughs> it it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Dialga and Palkia GX that had the... I can't remember. What the, one was Timeless GX. What was the other one? Oh, I can't it was like oh, the one that got rid of Zero Vanish, yeah. Yeah, like shuffle all the energy into yeah the and like take another turn and stuff like that. Like, it's one of those ones that, as you say, when you pull it off, it's amazing and it probably wins you the game. Yeah. But it's really hard to do. Yeah, I I will say that this does have the guardian engine. You know, like I guess I guess the other decks had like Magnazon and stuff, but like yeah, the guardian is like a time tested deck where you get a couple of guardians in play and suddenly energy just starts flying onto your board, and mm-hmm. that deals good damage as well. Like that's a deck in and of itself every day of the week. So I don't know. It's it's tricky. It surely is a one of. Like even for like the first two attacks, the first two attacks are fine, but that that GX attack's hilarious, man. I think it's brilliant. That's I, great. I want to I want to see somebody make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we get? We got um Tag Bolt released this week as well. There wasn't any other crazy cards I had to talk about. Nah. Oh, there was the rumor of um Lucario Mill Metal GX. They were released on uh, card sleeves, um. But we don't know anything else about that yet. But it would make sense as that would be our steel type tag team GX. And if you're going to do steel type, you might as well include the brand new steel to- steel type Pokemon and probably one of the most popular steel type Pokemon in Lucario. So it makes mm. sense that that would be it. So we'll look out for that one. And we'll obviously tell you guys about it when we find out more about it. But yeah, tag bolt guys. Who who is buying a place at a beedrill day one? Yep, ding 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 ding. <laughs> like the day that this dropped, Al texted me, going more or less, forget about I'm tag team sure. GXs. I'm playing B drill and fossils. Well, I actually, I changed my mind. I'm... You changed your mind to what? I've changed my mind. I've got a new favorite now. There's something what? I'm actually quite excited about. Which is? Well, that's Gyarados. Gyarados. Really? Gyarados. Really. Yeah, he's like Gramble, except bad. Except sometimes better. Right, so... <laughs> I've not even read Gyarados... <laughs> I haven't even read Gyarados yet. So, for one water energy, filter out 30 plus damage, reveal the top 7 cards of your deck. This attack does 30 more for each water... <laughs> Christ's sake, Al. <laughs> for each water energy you find. Then... Shuffle those water deck, water energy back into your deck. Discard the remaining <laughs> cards. Right. So if you do that a few times, eventually you just you're just gonna have water deck. Oh, but even then, you don't have that much. 
Right, so theoretically, you discard seven water energy, you do like 200 and something damage, yeah? That's, that's the play. Yeah, well, you don't discard the energy. The energy stays in the deck, and you discard yeah. everything else. Sorry, sorry, you reveal seven water yeah. energy, yeah. That's gross. So, like, the first couple, maybe don't do so much, but then you just build your deck so you can mill yourself down to, like, 12 cards, and they're all water energy. Oh, then, uh, so janky, it. man. That feels like such a risky strategy, that man. Is such an <laughs> albeck, yeah, man. Uh, so he's trying to have zero cards. Yeah, but Granville's actually good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll see how it goes. Shots fired, man. <laughs> Shots but, like, like, you're totally right, though. Like, for those of you who don't know Al particularly well, Al likes to play bad decks. Like Al, Al deliberately tries to play bad decks and then win with them, so that we all feel bad about ourselves. Al had a great track them. record with that um, <clears throat> that Golbat card from Sun and Moon Base. No, not Golbat, a uh, Golduck yeah. from Sun and Moon Base. Oh, that thing Can you remember horrible. that man? Very... Al played like <laughs> uh, single prizes before everybody else played single prizes. Man, yeah. it was horrible. And like uh, every week you would build this brand new deck, you would buy all the cards, you would show up with your big expensive deck and suddenly you were losing to Golduck again. <laughs> oh, I hated that thing. Uh, the good old days. But sadly, uh, Stormy has rotated. He has, yeah. Stormy was yeah, integral. That's a thick bench. And Dive Ball, that was the other one. Dive Ball yeah, as well, yeah. Splash Energy. Splash it. Oh, so that whole deck rotated out bar, bar the gold duck. <laughs> and gold duck break as well. That was also. <laughs> but yeah, B drill. Going back to B drill. Yes. Gotta be, gotta be like. That's the jump off of this set, surely. The one that costs like stupid amounts online. And hopefully we get a league promo. So for one grass energy, Destiny Barb. This attack can only be used when this Pokemon has damage counters on it. Easy enough. Both active Pokemon are knocked out. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Everything about that is awesome. Yeah, but... Second attack, ninety damage does ten damage to itself for double colorless energy. Could be nice. You're you're playing it for Destiny Barb because the idea is you attack a couple of times with B Drill and you knock out GXs and you win the game. You probably do play DC in there though for maybe like the mirror match or for one prize attackers on your opponent's side of the board, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, well, because honestly, I don't know if he's really a deck self. I think you he don't think? rises too fast. No, I think he's a tech in the Ganyan box. Oh god. Because that's what people play now. That's a thing now, apparently, yeah. <laughs> get to that. Like, but surely, surely with water duplicates Kakuna, yeah. that makes yeah, it a deck. Yeah, but you don't have any way to, to like, one prize decks. And even if they're just playing regular GXs, you're still uh, losing prizes and just not draw. really winning the prize race. Just draw. That was fine. <laughs> just draw. Just really quickly draw. <laughs> and then you can go get lunch at the bakery. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> that is the play. I mean, yeah, you can like uh, Destiny Barb knock out your Beedrill and go into Hoopa or something. But then you're still getting rolled by every one by the sacker. No, I sacked that Destiny Bar and go into uh, um, Shuckle. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Something like that. Destiny Bar into Shuckle. Chances are you're taking all the energy off the board anyway with Destiny Barb. And then Shuckle will never be able to be touched because they won't be able to attach the energy to it. Well, actually, then the Gardevoir just slaps down three and goes nuts. Uh, we're not playing against Gardevoir. <laughs> and even then, if we're playing against Gardevoir and he knocks us out, we just Destiny Bar it and knock it out. <laughs> And then we're playing against a GX deck and we win anyway. <laughs> Tell you, man, Beedro, new meta. The, the thing is, like, you have, to look at, you have to look at this Beedro, right, and go, they have clearly printed this as a way to try and control tag team GXs. Yeah, definitely. Imagine, man. Yeah. It, 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 that's why this card is, exists. You know what I mean? Because they, they realise that tag team GXs potentially could create this power vacuum that people have been talking about for ages as soon as they were announced mm. basically and this puts it in check to some degree oh and uh, there's another boy who seems to do that or at least i got that impression when uh... it's uh mr mime 
with his ability that says you can't play Ace Aurora. Yes, is that, I saw yeah, that list of so yeah. Did. yeah, 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 yeah. So retrieval the number one block. member of the No Ace Aurora. Retrieval block the ability says your opponent's Pokemon with damage counters on them, and all cards attached to those Pokemon can't be returned to your opponent's hand. So yeah, it shuts off Ace Aurora. Do you know his attack actually isn't too bad? Yeah, like 20, 20 damage, damage for the coin oh, paralyzed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean that that could be a thing in its own. Yeah, people, someone probably will use that attack. Yeah. <laughs> one person will win one game with that attack. Yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> yeah, reminds you like on bubble turns. The major, and everyone will go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Those, there's a lot of cool cards coming out of the set. There's one. There's a couple we do need to talk about though, because I reckon um, the 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 talk online is that it's going to lead to a ban and expanded, and those are Omastar for the lesser part and Kabutops for the kind of the the greater part. Basically, the the idea is that in expanded, you would be able to maxes these guys onto the field um, in on like the first turn of the game and just lock your opponent out of for Omastar, as long as this Pokemon is in play and you have if you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand, which is obviously devastating, but like if you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, chances are you're gonna need to play things like Shaman and Lele's and stuff like that to set this up. So like your opponent might be able to play around that. But the Kabutops is broken. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any supporter cards from their hand. That, to me, will mean that Maxis does get banned. Because that coming against that turn one and just being like, you can't play a supporter, sucks. That that really, really sucks. Um, I'm glad I don't play an Expanded. <laughs> Why not ban Maxis? They might just ban this since they banned. Archaeops, which did the same sort of thing with. I doubt they would ban it the minute they print it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. Like, I think they might do that kind of thing they did with Shiftry, where Shiftry was unbanned because Forest got banned. Yeah, hmm. I think so that's exactly might, like, what would happen. So they'll, they'll like unban Archaeops and then ban Maxis instead. Yeah, has it been a has it been officially announced that Maxis is being banned? Because I think I read that somewhere. Maxis was have been mistaken. Tem I think it's been banned in Japan because right. um, the card has come out in Japan. Like that, they've got these cards, I think, or they're just about to get them. This is like pre-sales and stuff yeah, like that happening now. Um, but like the minute I'm, I could be wrong. The minute cards are like printed in japan i'm pretty sure they're legal so they need to deal with it now um so yeah. the ban hasn't come over here yet but chances are i mean come on they're not gonna if they banned archaeops which did a very very similar thing to this in that you could get out turn one with maxis and it stops your opponent playing the game do you know what i mean like a lot more a lot less players played evolution pokemon as players play supporter cards yeah, like, absolutely. You could still run through Archaeops with a big <laughs> basics deck and have a pretty decent day, but like, try doing that without supporters. The only card, the uh, only deck I could think of that doesn't really play supporters is Grand Bull, and even then, it plays the Apricorn Maker, which would be really annoying mm. if it couldn't play. Like from a standard, you have a hard time. Uh, thing. Yeah, you would have a real hard time playing. From a standard perspective, looking at this, the fact that you can wear candy off a fossil yes. is ridiculous. Yeah. So and you can have that. Yeah. Well, you can't, like, start a fossil, so you'd have to start Tapu Koko, get a fossil. True, but, I mean, that's not overly difficult when you look at yeah, the kind of fossil hard. support we've had. Yeah. Um, I can't like think of the cards off the top of my head. No, but there's, like, things that search them out and stuff like that as well. What's it called? I can't. Off the I can't remember. Uh, like, also, exploration kit. That's yeah, the like, one. That's um, but it's really not that hard. You know what I mean? If like, if, if you just said Tapu Coco, so play like two or three Coco, and then your fossils. Yeah. And, you and you're almost. You, 
you guarantee it. You guarantee it because you can't well, start actually, fossil. What I'd probably yeah. do is play the quick hunt Sableye. Open that, and then you're guaranteed to be able to like search for a rare candy or whatever you need, even if you're, yeah. if you're going first. Mm -hmm. And you can retrieve them. It's totally disgusting, and it's it. It's why I personally am really put off of playing expanded because it feels like a lot of decks in expanded just want to stop you playing the game, and I don't want to not play the game. Do you know what I mean? Well, like it's what puts me I'll, off of expanded all the time. I'm definitely with you there. It becomes solitaire. Yeah. Um, and expanded, which and the other thing is because the pool is so big and expanded, there's so many different things that you need to be aware of and yeah. tech for and all these other things and a, a lot of the cards can be expensive and stuff. But um, I'm definitely going to try and stop people playing the game in standard. I want to make a bit of a thing. <laughs> I th I think it's amazing. So it's the idea. Of it's attack is actually pretty decent as well. 80 damage, and then this does 20 damage to two of your opponent's bench. So it's 80 with a 20-20 spread. I mean, it's not awful. And and it's a fighting type, so yeah. choice band and it KOs all the work. Yep. You know, there's... Or I could just uh, put an energy on my guard and knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> that and everything else, Al. <laughs> anyway. Jumping over to the tournament side of things, we have one regional that we can talk about um, pretty quickly because there's only a couple of decks actually been around from it. Not um, one regional that we actually know how to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's what, a good way. Of one that it. we know how to talk about, um, and that is the regional in Brisbane, uh, which I'm a happy camper. Uh, it basically was dominated by the looks of things by. Good old Alolan Ninetales, Zoroark, Decidueye, everybody's happy. Um, and then there was two Grand Bulls in the top eight, so that makes Al happy. And there was no Zoroark control, so that makes everybody else happy. So it's, it's fine. It's fine. I, I like that last week Jacob and I had the top eight decks from Roanoke, and we sat and we discussed how versatile the format was and how many decks there was, and then one week later in Brisbane and there's like two decks. <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of deck lists from this, but like the, they're they're pretty standard as far as these yeah. decks go. The the second place one that there is a deck list available for, yeah. um, that looks to me more or less the same one that Rukan put out before Latin America. Not far off. Um, it. Yeah. If it's not it's definitely if it's not identical, it's definitely used it as a base. Um and I imagine that the other decks in the top eight that are the same deck would be very similar, similar. lists as well yeah. um so yeah grand bull as you said there's necrozma malamar and zora rock noblecephalon i'm gutted noblecephalon it was probably ninth let's be honest yeah ninth through 42nd or something well, given how much it was played at roanoke well if roanoke's anything <laughs> to go by yeah the, the rest of roanoke got released and it is literally just bliss on man i was like whoa i heard it was popular but that's crazy and then as we were getting ready to put up the get started on the pod we noticed that a japanese champions league tournament has concluded and 1226 masters played at this thing and when we scroll down and look at it, there's one card that pops out to all of us, and we all went, I didn't even realise that Zapdos was a thing. Zapdos, guys! What in the blue hell? Zapdos, one lightning energy with assault, thunder, 10 damage. If this Pokemon was on your bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, it does 70 more damage and isn't affected by weakness. So it does 80 damage. But we have this wonderful power, like, wonderful card called Electro Power, and with that we win the game it's absolutely crazy what happened why is this good well, i knew like jirachi was a good card but uh i just didn't pegs up dose at all but you're gonna need to me. you're gonna need to once you're in your turn get jirachi and your active look at the top five cards your deck get a trainer then get it out of the active <laughs> mm. like what but I mean, you're playing the list. Played four Guzma, three Switch, one Escape Rope, three Escape Board. So <sighs> yeah, you escape board your Jirachi, and then you can just pop all these all day. Absolutely mental. It also played a Wobbuffet 
to stop Prism Star abilities. What? <laughs> when Why not? And a Tapu Coco, the Tapu Coco Prism, which is just beautiful. Once during your turn, if this is on your bench, attach one Lightning Energy card from your discard pile to two of your bench Pokemon, and then just Lost Zone it. Like, all right, I like that. I'm glad this. That's clearly how this guy's won because he's played that Wob Effect card to stop that happening everywhere else. But yeah, Zapdos, it's like everywhere. As as you scroll down the list, you just keep seeing Zapdos and Jirachi. And, and Jolteon, apparently. Apparently Jolteon's fantastic. Who called that? I mean, poof. <laughs> Jolteon, as soon as something's got Buzzwall's attack and Landorus before it, it, it's good. It's a good card. Uh, electric Ballot? Okay. I, th I thought it was Electric Bullet, but whatever. Um, this deck does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and 30 to the active. So, 30-30. With Electro Power, you're hitting some really, really nice numbers with Choice Bands. This this list played Po Town. Like, yeah, man. It's playing Bill's Analysis, the one I'm looking at. Right, I'm not looking at the same one as you. Fair enough. What one? I think I'm looking at 14. Right, I was looking at one slightly higher up. What does yeah, Bill's Analysis do? What does Bill's Analysis do? Uh, <laughs> it does drag tricks, but it's bad because it's water. Yeah, look, no, top actually, seven cards you deck, so choose two trainer cards you find there, reveal them and put them in your hand. It's nice, it's it's not a bad list. Like, yeah. in this deck that plays four Nice Ball, four Electro Power, three Ultra Ball, two Escape Rope, two Energy Spinner, one Switch, it's loaded, it's just loaded with item cards. So yeah, like, why not? It's trainers, it's not even just items, it's trainer cards, so you can get any of your 35 trainers. And uh, and these decks also appear to be playing Volkner for the lightning energy. Yes. Yeah. How often do you see that? Uh, as if it was like something <laughs> that we were meant to do to begin with. <laughs> Bizarre. Oh, they're reprinting him with good art now. They're, they're reprinting it with good art. I actually seen that yeah, in the tag for. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's going to be a hollow. The hmm. the question on everybody's lips now has to become surely: When are we getting this Zapdos? I have no idea. Uh, is that where the one come from? Wait, is this the Zapdos that was in like a lunchbox or something crazy like that? No, I think the lunchbox one was the other one. This one's SM8A. It should be in tag team. Like the one that had a double colorless on it. It was a promo, I think. Not in the tag bolt set of cards. What? Oh, ta it's tag bolt SM8A. So he was the set that would have had like. Incineroar GX and all Ah. Uh, right. And like everyone overlooked him when uh, we saw that. Definitely. I definitely overlooked that. I was like, oh, cool, it's got like a weaker version of Glissapod attack. That's fine. Yeah, cool. It's like bad Glissapod. Exactly. It doesn't hit for weakness. Oh, I was briefly, very briefly, extremely upset when I saw these results. Because, oh no, everyone's playing Electra. Oh, Zapdos is everywhere. That just knocks out Gyarados. <laughs> No, he doesn't actually have a weakness. It doesn't have a weakness, so it's fine. But just like yeah, a couple of electro power and you knock out anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's nuts, man. Oh, three electro power, so it's a bit of an ask. We need to quickly also mention the um, Shintaro Ito deck that finished 11th place, which I watched a video by uh, good old Wasi just before I came on today, and I was like, what? What is what is this guy talking about? He was bigging up this deck that everyone in Japan was super hyped for and you know, doing the whole like hype, hype, hype thing and he was like, Now look, I, I know I big some stuff up, he says, but people are really going crazy about this. This deck plays one one energy card. It plays four stage twos and it plays only Looker as a draw supporter. And I was like Eh? Basically the the thing revolves around using Greninja Break and to get these things out, we're using Meganium, and we play Swampert, and we play uh, Slacking. It's bizarre. You play one Super Boost Energy. What? What is this deck? This can't be a thing. Uh, pass. I, I, what? <laughs> oh, it's, it's I, what? I was playing. It's got to I was be playing PT. I was playing oh, PTC yeah. Joe before we came on, and uh, I come up against like two or three people who were who kept benching Chikoritas, and I'm like, 
What am I missing here? What? Why are you playing Chikorita? Oh, it's all the rage, man. Yeah, evidently. I mean, though, I ran through it with Lost March. The minute two, I get two, some time, man, I need to try it, this so. thing out. <laughs> um, but it's it, it's so weird. I need to yeah, see a deck list for this. Now that I think about it. Like, you hit Meganium, you set up a pile of stage 2s, you use Greninja GX's attack and shuffle them into your bench, Yep. then you put up a slacking, Yep. so that they've got no abilities, and slacking has like 180 hit points. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then and you then just time, switch or Guzma the slacking out of the active and do it all your, over again. Yeah. Well, Wasi suggested that you would basically play your deck down till it had, like, hee-haw in it. Like, mm. as to, except from the Greninja that you shuffle back. So you'd essentially shuffle back three cards. You'd shuffle back uh, Froakie, Greninja, and um, Super, Super Boost. Boost. And then you would Swamp it to draw them all out. So you would literally just play those three deck cards over and over and over again and if yeah, you set you that up do that every turn if you set that and, up uh, you win i'm sorry you just yeah. win but it's setting that up is not easy so does this deck play gladion then yes how many two i've not seen a list no one's seen Fair a list well. yet i i thought wasi had given some kind of list he, he knew cards that were played in it Right, but like nobody knows what the actual full list is. I need to see a list for this because so, the counts for this must be insane. There must be I, at I, least like you would think like two, three Greninja, two yeah. Meganium, two Slacking, two Swampert. Like that is getting messy. I I would also imagine that it's playing. Um, is it Zinnia that gets your prism? Uh, Lysia. Let's see, let's see, sorry. What I imagine it's, um, oh, sorry. I'm, oh, for I'm, Super Boost. Okay. For Super Boost, yeah. Right. Nah, you could just play Energy Auto for that, I guess. But I say, you, you just could. draw out your deck. You just draw it. Or it's, just draw your entire deck. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, one part. It's just so weird. Bizarre. Utterly bizarre. I don't understand. Yeah. But again, yeah, I mean, yeah. this, this is the guy... This, tournament. this is the guy who won Worlds with Mega Ordino, so... Uh, is it? I think it's a different guy. No, it's, no, it's the same not. guy. Shintaro Ito. It's 100% the same guy. Yeah. No, I'm also so, going confused with the other guy. So uh, with Shun play, Ito, yeah. who was the first guy who really played Grand Ball. <laughs> That's the guy you've got a poster of in your room, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks like two people have played it. Um, there was somebody else slightly lower down with a very similar looking... Yeah. I'm not even going to pretend like I can say his name, um, but he was 22nd, and it looks like he played the same deck. And I'll have a go at pronouncing it. Go on then. Atsutoshi Kubo. Nailed it. I bet you I did, by I the way. I think you probably did, to be honest, that sounds right. It, it doesn't <laughs> sound dumb, but if I said it, it would sound dumb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what is this one? 47 with Naganadol and... and Zapdos and Jolteon and what is going yeah. on? A apparently you just play Zapdos with anything. Apparently Zapdos is the like, best card in format. Oh, it's like guys, you can just do um, Magnetos for free because they suck the energy up. I'm so lost, man. What is... You know, I feel as if I start to understand these sets a little bit more as they come out and I I do start to become a, a mildly better player, but then something like this happens and I just, I'm completely at a loss. The same thing happened when we were reviewing the deck that, it was a stall deck, and we were reviewing that for like a good 10 minutes on the podcast one night and my brain ached. And I didn't know why it was good, I didn't know why it was working, it just hurts. But like... Yeah. You see, like, I mean, this deck, this whole tournament was won by Zorark Lycanroc, and second place was Malamar. Oh, good, you don't need to worry too hard. You know, things will be fine. You can just play Zorark Lycanroc. But I'm not used to playing Zapdos. And it's bizarre, like, what? Where did that come from? That is not a card we've been hyping up. It's not a card we've been excited to see. It's just a random ass Zapdos card that's come out of nowhere and just, like, dominated this tournament, by looks nice. It didn't win. 
granted, but it came close. Oh, it's bizarre. We also see that Jirachi is in, like, everything now. So, get Jirachis as soon as you see them, you know. He's mostly just in Zoroark. I mean, uh, Xanders. He's in this um, Ultra Malamar deck. Two oh, of. Really? Yeah, it looks like he's been used to oh, find right, things Ultra like... Ultra Malamar would be playing skateboards anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Three skateboards in there, and it's got four energy spinner, it's got four um, mysterious treasure to get all your stuff out. I mean, pff, why not? Absolutely bizarre. So it looks like it looks like that's going to be a pretty damn good card. And yeah, steal it off of everyone you can before they get them all dirty. We've lost Ian again. I'm sure he'll come back <clears> soon. <throat> um, but yeah, that's it. That's a hard one. Like, <laughs> I think that's the first time we've tried to review a Japanese tournament. Did we yeah, do I good? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's it's tough, isn't it? Because yeah, they're marginally ahead of us, but we're also kind of in line now. Yeah. So so this is kind of what we're looking at. I feel as if we should know February, this a whole lot better. And then it's like, well, wait, what? Zapdos is a thing. Uh, what? Like come February, just be a Zorok deck that can. Uh, because people. Like in Europe, in America, they just really like playing Zoroark. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> well, he is great, so it's understandable. Yeah. But I can't remember the last time I put Zoroarks in a deck. I, I've just not been playing them that often. I'm really into these like one prizers and like the. I suppose I played them in my um, Decidui list not that long ago, but yeah, I've been enjoying the whole. One prizers and I really, really, really like that Gardevoir deck I played last week. I played um the Jimmy Pendarvis Gindar Gardevoir list. Gindardevoir. Uh <laughs> he made Gardevoir great again and he liked my tweet. And I really, <laughs> really enjoyed his deck. I thought it was absolutely <clears throat> fantastic. A whole lot of fun. And it was just it I, I felt in control the entire time I was playing it. Every time I I wanted a card, it was there. Every time I wanted to power draw and get something, I got it. It was just, it just ran so well. But yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, giving it a It also ran goal. into Blacephalon. It did. <laughs> it did, and Blacephalon was tough. <laughs> Didn't even let me win on my yeah. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly what Lynn said to me when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, la last Thursday in Settlers was literally the latin american final it was wasn't it uh, no sorry not latin american roanoke final, roanoke final yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> which was funny <laughs> but yeah it was it was good and honestly like if i had to play one deck in this format for the rest of the format i would play that definitely it was really really strong it felt great and yeah god of what is back <laughs> and in full force makes me happy <laughs> Makes me very, very happy. But anyway, I think that's about it for this week. We have definitely, we've talked for almost an hour. And Jacob will love listening back to this, I'm sure. And um, yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to say before we wrap it up. <sighs> no. <laughs> Zapdos. <laughs> Zapdos, apparently. Yeah. Zapdos. Zapdos. 80 damage is good. <laughs> yeah. 80 damage is good. <laughs> like big numbers. Especially when you need to switch twice in one turn, Zapdos is busted. That's that's what we'll leave it on. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much for listening. We will obviously be back next week as always, and uh, hopefully Jacob will be joining us as well. But anyway, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.